parking. In the most densely populated city outside of London, finding somewhere to leave the car can prove a challenge. Portsmouth has a sizeable network of car parks of all sizes and types, from private to council-run, miniature to multi-storey, as well as on-street parking across the city. And the council is raking in the pounds from the money we spend to park in the city. Between 2010 and 2015, Portsmouth Council's revenue from pay and display went up from three and a half million to over four million pounds. That's a 13% increase in five years. Well, there's an increase in number of visitors and people that park in the city, and clearly, inflationary-wise, there's been increases in the amount that's been charged, so that's what it's down to. These prices are regularly kept under review. Um, parking display, for, uh, pay and display from the car parks and all car parking can clearly goes towards um, delivering the services that the council has to deliver. Um, the council has to deliver emptying bins, children's social care, you know, a myriad of things that people need and the view of the council is that people need to pay for what they want so that the council can deliver what they need. But one of the criticisms often levelled at parking bosses is that parking restrictions are confusing and that the cost of parking can vary even on the same street. Now I'm in the heart of Old Portsmouth, just a couple of hundred metres from the seafront and right next to the city's old cathedral. And this is just one of the places where parking could be described as a little perplexing. If you park in the bay right next to me here, you can stay for two hours for absolutely nothing. Or if you have a residence parking permit, you can stay for as long as you like. But cross over to the other side of the road and it's a completely different story. Over there, it's pay and display, which costs £2.60 for those same two hours, or a lot more if you want to stay longer. Residents say this is confusing, baffling and makes no sense. Meanwhile, go another 50 metres down the road and the price is different again. There I found that parking for two hours had gone up to £3.10. Well, it doesn't seem logical when you're in that street. At the end of the day, we've got a city that's nearly four miles long. I mean, you've got a parking restriction and at some point you've got to have a barrier between one restriction and another restriction. The same restriction doesn't fit for the whole city. So we have to put it into chunks and make sure that the restriction around a particular area is what suits that area, whether it be residential, whether it be commercial, whether it be night economy, whether it be industrial, or whether it be tourists. We've got to make sure that the restriction reflects the area that it is. So somewhere you've got to have a barrier. A natural barrier is a road. One of the reasons for these varying prices could be that the city is divided into zones for parking. And the price for each of these zones is set individually. A decision was taken by the council six, seven years ago to actually try and make it fairer and easier for people to understand what they have to pay. Um, so we've actually got a zone system within the city where there's a seafront zone, there's a central zone and there's a district zone. So I don't actually accept that there is lots of different prices. If you go to many cities you can have different prices in the same street. It's important to try to avoid that, to try and make things transparent and easy for people to understand. So I don't actually accept that that's the case in Portsmouth. Whatever the reason behind this seemingly erratic pricing system, for the prudent parker there are certainly savings to be made. Charlotte Brewer-Edney, that's Solent.